Good evening, welcome to the Planning Commission meeting of the City of Dana Point of uh, this Monday, April 23rd, 2018. Um, Madam Secretary, can we please call the roll? Please let the record show that Commissioner Donor is absent with an excused absence. The rest of the Planning Commissioners are present. Thank you. Um, Matt, can you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it looks like it went out of order. We already called the roll. Um, minutes, approval of the minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion that we approve the minutes with one change, and that is uh, to the adjournment time. I know we are here past 6.30. Um, I'm assuming it was sometime, probably 7.30. But other than that, I'd make a motion that we pass. Minutes as with that change. I'll second. Okay. If we could vote on that. And that item passes uh, with four votes and one absent. <coughs> Uh, moving on, public comments section. Is there anyone here who, okay. Um, anyone wishing to address the Planning Commission during the public comment section or on an agenda item is asked to complete a request to speak form available at the door. The completed form is to be submitted to the Planning Commission Secretary prior to an individual being heard by the Planning Commission. Any person wishing to address the Planning Commission on a subject other than those scheduled on the agenda is requested to do so at this time. In order to conduct a timely meeting, there will be a three minute time limit per person and an overall time limit of 15 minutes for the public comments portion of the agenda. State law prohibits the Planning Commission from taking any action on a specific item unless it appears on the posted agenda. I have a request to uh, speak form from Frank McAdams. Ladies and gentlemen of the Planning Commission, my name is Frank McAdams. I'm a, uh, I have been a Dana Point homeowner since 1971. I'm on the adjunct faculty at the uh, Cinema Ar Cinematic Arts um, School at the University of Southern California. And I'm a Vietnam combat veteran. I got my house through a VA loan. This is a uh, FYI, a heads up on um, permit number 180576, which is an ADU permit at 34031 Piquito Drive. Uh, that permit is in the plant check phase right now, as I understand, and went through a review on April 17th. When I moved into my house in 1971, the population of Dana Point was 4,000. This uh, is being covered by a, um, the accessory dwelling unit memorandum of December of 2016. The ADU memo of December 2016 is specific in its intent statewide. However, it also states on page eight for um, local governments, they may designate where ADUs are permitted and not permitted. It further states that these areas should be approached primarily on health and safety issues, including water, sewer, traffic flow, and public safety. The aerial photo that has been distributed to the Planning Commission shows uh, Piquito Drive, which is a cul-de-sac street with one-way ingress and egress. This has a neighborhood impact and it's already being felt. Uh, there's a great reaction to it. And uh, we've already had uh, three people, including myself, appear to the uh, city council last week. And I've also been in contact with Assemblyman Bill Bro's office uh, because this, is a, uh, this, this comes from a statewide purview. Um, these are single-family residences. They've been there um, 
since, uh, I believe, since Butler Construction went in there in 1959 and 1960. As I said, it has a great deal of impact, and what we want is the Planning Commission, when this does come up for final review, to carefully look at it in terms of density. There's a fire hydrant, as you can see on the aerial photo, which is at the end of the cul-de-sac circle. So this has um, a great deal of impact on this street, and we want you to t really take a very good look at this because we're probably going to go back to City Council and work through Bill Rose's office also. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. McAdams. Are there any other members of the public that wish to speak on an item other than what's on the agenda tonight? Okay. Thank you. Are we allowed to discuss what Mr. McAdams brought up without taking any kind of, or can we ask questions or no? Uh, no, we really can't discuss the item since it's not on the agenda. Okay. Um, but we could agendize it for a future date if you would like to. Okay. Or you can direct staff to look into the issue, things along those lines. We just can't really discuss it at a deeper level than that. Okay. I guess I, guess I just have one question I don't think is at a deep level, which is based on the issues that he's raising, is there something that's likely to come before us in the future? Uh, by state law, accessory dwelling units are ministerial action, so there will not be a discretionary permit before you. And I can just add that the city council is aware of this issue and has asked staff to look at it, so we are looking into it. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> Moving on, consent calendar. There's no items on the consent calendar. Item number two, public hearing. Coastal development permit CDP 17 dash 0024 and site development permit SDP 18 dash 004 for an addition and remodel to an existing single family residence in the residential Beach Road 12 RBR 12 zone located at 35561 Beach Road. Do we have a staff report? We do, uh, Mr. Chairman, John Champa will be giving the report tonight. Great. Good evening, Planning Commission Chair and Planning Commissioners, John Champa, I'm the case planner for the Benya D's Residents. This project site is located in the Capistrano Bay District, which is a private community located within the RBRD 12 zoning designation. The site is is a existing beachfront lot, improved with a 2,500 square foot single family residence and attached two car garage. Just to give you a little background on this property, it was originally constructed in 1990 or 1949 is a one-story 1,871 square foot structure with no covered parking. In 1964, a variance was approved to allow covered parking, uh, which would allow for a two-car 550 square foot garage up to five feet uh, from the front property line. So that located the new garage, or the garage as it currently exists in front of the existing structure and reduced the side yard setbacks from three and a half feet to three feet. As a component of the project, a 360-square-foot addition was added on the second story on the seaward side uh, to allow for a new master bedroom and bathroom. The project brought the house to 20, uh, 2,500 square feet and created the 550-square-foot two-car garage. The structure is considered legal non-conforming because it is located in the FP3 uh, overlay zone and is a slab-on-grade foundation where for new construction, a, uh, the structure would be required to be located above the floodplain elevation and uh, placed on caissons. Uh, so uh, it's not conforming related to that factor as well as it has a um, side yard setback of one and a half feet where three feet is required. Given that the structure is legal non-conforming related to the FP3 uh, overlay, it's limited to a one-time 10% square foot addition and an annual remodel of 10% of the current value of the structure. The project is requesting a 298 square foot addition above the garage on the second fl floor for a new master bed or for a new bedroom and bathroom that, and a seven square foot addition that would allow for stairs uh, to access the new upper level above the garage. The addition modifies the architecture of the building to a new craftsman style design. 
This is the existing configuration and images of the property. As you can see, it's typical of a, a beach cottage bungalow of beach road area from the 1940s and 50s. This is the proposed site plan showing the existing structure. The area highlighted in red identifies the location of the second story addition. And then you can see the two corner, two corners that are highlighted in red here are the uh, addition for the stairs that were previously mentioned. All of the proposed additions do comply with the required development standards associated with the project. This is the existing first floor, pl first floor floor plan and the proposed stairs will be located adjacent to the uh, front entry here. Here is a little bit better view of the second floor plan showing the stairs leading up to the new master bedroom bathroom. As you can see here, all of the uh, proposed dimensions are provided showing compliance with the required setbacks. This is the new proposed uh, um, elevation for the first floor, which would show that there are a number of plane breaks and design elements incorporated in the design to meet the city's design guidelines and um, convey the new craftsman style design. Project complies with the, all the requirements associated with the coastal development permit in that the project complies with the city's local coastal program, including compliance with the city's zoning ordinance. The project has no impacts to public access as it's located within a private community. Uh, and there is public access that exists at its closest point in six or 0.63 miles from the site at the Pochi Beach Access location, as well as um, about 0.8 miles from the Doheny Beach Access. Project also requires a site development permit because it's located in the FP3 and is limited, and because it's legal non-conforming associated with the foundation and construction designs required in that overlay, as previously stated, it's limited to a one-time 10% addition and an annual 10% remodel uh, limitation based on the valuation of the work. The project is uh, proposing a exactly 10% addition at 305 square feet and a 3.2% remodel valuation of 16,825 square feet. The addition is located on the inland side of the structure and complies with all of the associated setbacks and as previously stated, is architecturally integrated into the new design uh, to provide those visual um, massing reliefs to comply with the necessary design guidelines. Project conforms with the required findings given that it is in compliance with the city's local coastal program, as well as complies with all the applicable public uh, recreation policies and access policies with, associated with the Coastal Act and complies with all the re required findings for the coastal development permit and site development permit. That concludes staff's presentation. Staff is recommending approval of the coastal development permit and site development permit. Staff and the applicant are available for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Does the commission have any questions for staff on this item? Commissioner Opal. Okay. Um, the applic I mean the, the address for the application is 35561. However, when you look at the photo in our package, it has a different address. It's 35557. That's what's actually on the house. The photo, they might have gotten mixed up. That's the only thing I can think of. The, so the photos that, should be, the photos that should be in your. So the picture <coughs> of their existing their address that's on the house says 35557. So I'm just wondering what the correct address is for the site. Yeah, it looks like they put the wrong pictures in the wrong. Because that doesn't look like the picture. Here, do you want the picture? So that is for the next application. So they might have the place. Yes. Okay. My apologies for that. So the photos represented. So they're that they're in the wrong spot. Yeah. This is the 
the design. This is the existing. So this is the one. Photos. So they're just yes. in the wrong. Yeah, they just. Okay. Yeah, they might have gotten. <coughs> they're backwards. It's okay. Okay. Any other questions, Commissioner? That was my only question. Thank you. Commissioner Nelson. Yeah. Uh, how many bedrooms are in this? And then the other. I'm more curious than anything else. There's a wet bar in the new bedroom. I've never seen a wet bar in a. You know, usually those are for entertaining and stuff. So I'd be curious to know why that's going in. Though I don't know that we have any control over that. So there, is, there is no control associated with the wet bar in the room. Uh, it does not uh, elevate to the level of an additional unit. Uh, so there would be no additional trigger associated with any parking associated with that. Um, I believe that this would be a three bedroom. Three going to a four or two? Three bedroom going, going to a four, okay. yes. All right, thanks. Vice Chair Murphy, do you have any questions for staff? Do you have any questions for staff? Actually, um, I just had a, well, informational. Uh, based that this house is, I mean, there's not a, the front elevation obviously is the back of the house and the, the ocean is toward the rear elevation, correct? Correct. Yeah. T explain to me where the utilities are in terms of uh, water runoff, that kind of thing. So as part of the applications, the drainage plan is, is required, and it requires all the drainage to be brought to the street. Um, so it requires an infiltration system that's located adjacent to the street, basically to allow the water to kind of come in, uh, enter into that area, and then slowly disperse into the ground. Uh, and then, you know, any additional water would go to the Beach Road area where it would be funneled into another incorporation infiltration area and then dispersed and, and filtered as needed. So all water should be from the structure forward being brought to the street. Okay, thank you. I have no questions for staff. Um, so we'll open the public hearing. Madam Speaker, do we have any speakers for this item? Madam Secretary. Thank you. Uh, Rob Williams. Well, good evening, um, Rob Williams. I'm the architect representing the applicant. I'm just here in case you guys have any questions. I have no presentation, but just got any questions for me? I more than happy to answer them. Wet bar. Any insight on the wet bar? Say it again. I, the wet bar. What about it? It's just I haven't seen a wet bar in, on a set of plans in a long time. Um, he wants a little area because what? Like a man cave type. Oh, he wishes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, essentially what it is, when there are people come over, friends and all that, that's essentially going to be a place where they kind of hang out. They can make their little coffee and all that without having to come downstairs. So it's just really going to be a little blow kind of refrigerator, a little coffee maker. Essentially, that's all it's going to be. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we'll close the public hearing. Does anybody have any comments on this project? Well, oh, go ahead, Vice well, Chair. I was just going to just add um, this and I'm getting confused with which project because of the picture, but it would actually apply to both. The, um, it appears from what I'm seeing that it's about 300 square foot addition, correct? Right. And this is a remodel of the single family. Um, we all know what the homes look like on Beach, on Beach Road. I mean, there's just all sizes and shapes and 
configurations. And so uh, having looked at, looked at that, it seems to me that it's, it's a good fit. Uh, so, and I think my question was answered. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, in um, my opinion, I, I think this is a great project. I think that um, you've done a really nice job with the front facade. It'll really update it and look nice. Um, I find that it's compliant. Yeah, I agree with the findings of the staff report that it's compliant with the zoning code and, and we're not over, overly, you know, exceeding the, the allowable additions and remodels. So with that, I'm, I'm supportive of the project. Do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, yeah. I make a motion that we approve the project um, CDP 17-0024 and SDP 18-0004. I'll second. Thank you. Great, that item passes. Thank you. Moving on <clears throat> to item number three, Coastal Development Permit, CDP 17-0026 and Site Development Permit, SDP 17-0048 for the addition and remodel of an existing single-family residence in the residential Beach Road 12, RBR 12 zone located at 35557 Beach Road. Do we have a staff report? Well, we do, and apologies for the uh, error with the photograph, but just for clarification for the record, we are addressing project located at 35557 Beach Road, and John Champ will be giving the staff report. Hello again. Hey. <laughs> so before you is the Langs residence. It's a request for a site development permit and a coastal development permit. The project site is actually located immediately adjacent to the previous property and is located within the RBRD 12 zoning designation, also within the uh, Capo Beach uh, community, Capo Beach Bay community. The project site is existing 3,900 square foot single family residence improved with a 420 square foot two car garage. Just to you, give you a little background on this property, uh, it was originally constructed in 1970 as a two story uh, 2,245 square foot structure with an attached carport. Back in 1981, a coastal development permit and site development permit was approved by the Coastal Commission for a 1,662 square foot addition, which included the conversion of the carport to a garage and added 903 square feet to the second floor of the house. The structure is considered legal non-conforming because it's a slab on grade foundation located within the FP3 overlay it exceeds the height limit for the zone and does not comply with the front side or deck setbacks for the lot B because the structure is legal non-conforming in the fp3 it's limited to a one-time 10 percent addition and an annual remodel of no more than 10 percent of the current value of the structure this, the proposed project would result in a 163 square foot addition which would expand the second story footprint over the garage, as well as a mezzanine over um, the second store, story above the second floor, um, above where the proposed addition is to be located. The proposed additions would result in a 283 square foot addition, which would, which would be a 7.2% uh, percent expansion to the structure. The proposed request also includes a remodel which includes the conversion of the bedroom on the first floor to a TV area, kitchen remodel, repair the existing exterior deck, relocate the elevator, and it, to incorporate a new laundry area for the first floor. This is the location of the property at 35557 Beach Road. Uh, as you can see here, it's, it's a little bit of a craftsman style design, maybe with a, with a little bit of a, a Tudor style. Um, also very you know, typical of this styling of architecture along Beach Road uh, from the 1970s era. The proposed addition, as you can see here, is highlighted in red and is located at the front of the lot. It's located on the uh, inland side to comply with the requirements of the FP3. 
and does comply with all of the applicable setback uh, standards. This is the, uh, on the top, the, exist, the top image is the existing floor plan and on the lower is the proposed floor plan. As you can see here, they're uh, proposing to remodel the kitchen area as well as convert the, this first floor bedroom to a TV room area along with the new laundry area. And the proposed second story, uh, second floor improvements include this addition, which pushes out the second story uh, beyond the garage. However, it does comply with the required 15 foot setback for the second story, as well as um, remodels the, the area with a new uh, bathroom area and creates two, two bedrooms. The mezzanine is located above that area and takes advantage of the very high ceilings uh, that exist with the second story. Um, the reason why it's considered a mezzanine and not a third floor is because it's less than one third of this square footage of the area that it's open to below and is surrounded by railing. So it does comply with the mezzanine um, definition and is not considered a third story, which would not be allowed per the um, zoning designation. This is the existing and the proposed elevations. As you can see, uh, the structural design uh, does improve the architecture of the building um, while still incorporated into the, the existing uh, compa compatibility elements of it in that it creates a new roof line. It does comply with the height requirements of the zone in that it has a uh, 10 and 12 pitch and is 28 feet in height. proposed project does comply with the requirements of the coastal development permit in that the project conforms to all the necessary requirements identified in the city's local coastal program as well as the zoning ordinance and the project has no impacts to public access given that it's located within a private community there's no public access uh, adjacent or within the site and the nearest uh, public access location is at Pochi Beach which is 0.63 miles from the site project also is required a site development permit given that it's located within the city's FP3 overlay and does comply with the requirements of the 10% addition and 10% annual remodel valuation in that the addition is at 7% which is 283 square feet and the remodel valuation is 9.55% uh, which is uh, 78,403 uh, dollars. The addition is located on the inland side as required per the site development permit requirements in the flood plain overlay as well as architecturally integrated in the design of the structure and does not create any mass Im massing impacts and complies with the city's design guidelines. The project conforms to all the required findings identified in the city's local coastal program related to public access, public rec recreation policies, and the coastal development permit and site development permit findings. Staff is recommending approval of the coastal development permit and site development permit. The applicant and staff are available for any questions. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. I'll start out. I have a question. <clears throat> um, from the mezzanine level, I don't think you can, but I just want to confirm. Can you see... Are, are there windows or like French doors that would allow you to see towards the ocean? Or are those just like closets and storage? These windows, you, uh, they look towards the, the inland. Towards the bluff, towards right. The bluff. Oh, but if you were to look the other way, one of the, one of the on sheet A7, the top right, looks like there's some doors there. I don't know if those are like windows or French doors or they're just access doors to like a closet I'm I just believe, curious I believe they're hold on let me look at the camera or if the architect A7. knows he can nod his head <laughs> okay it's near the attic. yeah there's just storage located into the attic area, okay so that that's thank, what that is thank you do any of my fellow commissioners have any questions I do. commissioner Nelson thank you mr. chairman a couple quick questions. So, and I don't know if you know the answer to this. Uh, this 10% remodel rule, 
So every year they can spend 10% of the value of, or the value of the improvements they could spend upgrading. But is it cumulative? cumulative? So if you don't use it, is it 20 next year for your remodel? How does that actually work? And what is the, the intent behind de-incentivizing someone to take care of their house? That's, the, that's one. And then the second relates to the one-time 10% addition. And the question would be, if they're at seven point whatever tonight, are they, can they come back for the next, for the two point, or, or is this it for expansion? Okay. Yeah. So to, to answer your first question, the, um, the addition isn't, isn't strictly annual. So if they hadn't done anything for five years, they wouldn't be allowed to do 50%, strictly limited to 10%. And that's basically to uh, associate with the, given that the structure is non-conforming, so um, basically the, the whole reasoning behind that is um, uh, establish some kind of limitations that n the city not wanting to allow people to make extensive improvements to their property at, and related to this is in a high hazard area. So if there were to have some kind of catastrophic, tra catastrophic event that would impact their property. So it's kind of a, it's an, um, adaptation measure to deal with these non-conforming structures okay. and then to, to answer your second question it's a one-time addition so um you get one opportunity to do it given that there's a, a you know 2.8 or 2.3 percent allowed or whatever that number is right. um the the square footage that is used is, is used at a one time and that's right. it Lo use it or lose it basically. use it or lose All it right. that was it thank you Any other questions for staff? I do. Commissioner Opal. Um, on table one, the compliance with the RBR 12 development standards, there's a lot of no's there. So kind of questioning that because the lot next door had apparently had some vari or variances that came with the county when they had done some work previously. Is there any reason that this particular parcel doesn't have variances that were carried over? And how do those current no's impact it, what what are they changing to try and bring it closer, I guess, is what I'm asking. Yes, so uh, staff did research. There were no variants associated with the, with the project. Uh, given the, the number of years of existence of the Beach Road community, development standards have changed over time, and that's just reflective of the... Um, the the number of nonconformings that are associated with the, the community and the structures individually. Um, also, you know, in the past, it could have been that uh, the property wasn't accurately surveyed, and when construction commenced, you know, structure it wasn't necessarily in the proper location. Uh, we do see that sometimes where the setback is just slightly off. Uh, with these type, with these projects, we do require a survey uh, prior to or with the entitlement, as well as under construction, to ensure that all the structure is being located in the appropriate areas. Given that um, the structure is not proposing to demolish more than more than 50% of the structure, um, which is a threshold established within our non-conforming ordinance. It's not required to be brought in, up into conformance. However, there is another threshold there, which is the 10% addition. If the property was gonna be proposing more than 10%, the entire structure would need to be brought in conformance with the FP3 standards, which would essentially require an entirely new structure. So there are a lot of uh, measures that are looked at and evaluated to ensure conformance. However, because of the location of the nonconformities, no new, um, there are no new nonconformities associated with this. Um, so, as proposed, the the addition um, complies with the height requirement, setback requirements, uh, front side and rear. So, uh, the new structure does meet all of the necessary standards. Any other questions? Is the, oh, never mind. Okay, uh, with that, we'll open the public hearing. Madam Secretary. Thank you. Uh, the illustrious Rob Williams. Same comment. 
here to represent the applicant. If you guys have any questions, we're more than happy to answer them. If not, I'll go sit down. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for making yourself available. With that, I'll close the public hearing. Does anybody, Commissioner Nelson? Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I would be supportive of the project. Um, it's well designed. I think it's really great to see breathe, uh, these older units, the new light being breathed into them, and really great use of the space with that mezzanine. I haven't seen somebody do that in a long time, so that was impressive. Um, so I'm fully in support of it. I mean, it meets this, you know, obviously we have some non-conforming issues, but relative to what we're approving tonight, fits within the neighborhood well. Um, it's certainly compatible with the neighborhood, and um, I agree with staff's findings as well. For that reason, I'll be supporting it tonight. Thank you. Vice Chair Murphy? Uh, ditto, I, I support it as well. Um, this project obviously is, very appropriate, seems to be very appropriate for Beach Road and uh, especially the hodgepodge of kinds of homes and sizes and types of, of homes in, on that, that uh, street. Uh, this, this would fit in just as well as any of the others that are there. And it, um, plans are not overwhelming to Beach Road. It, it, it looks like, of course, we've seen many bigger structures on Beach Road. So I think it's a, it's a good project. Like to see it go through. Thank you. Nothing additional. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I, I too am a supportive of the project. I, I, um, I was, uh, you know, like Commissioner Nelson, uh, thinking they did a nice job with the mezzanine and and squeezing a mezzanine in there and staying within the height restrictions is uh, really creative and good work. So, um, and it looks like it's going to be a really nice project for our town. So with that, let's, uh, oh, I'll make a motion that we approve. Approve CDP 17-026 and site development permit SDP 17-048 um, for the project at 35557 Beach Road. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Great, and that item passes. Thank you. <coughs> old business, there's no old business. New business, sign permit, sign program permit SPP 17-01 for a single tenant service station located at 33571 Del Obispo Street the mobile gas station. Do we have a staff report? We do, Nick Zorns will be giving tonight's presentation. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Good evening, Chairman Khan and fellow commissioners. Tonight's topic covers the establishment of a sign program for an existing commercial building, the mobile gas station and service station. The subject property is located at the southwest corner of Stonehill Drive and Del Obispo Street within the city's community commercial vehicular district. The slide shows the existing elevations of the mobile gas station. The sign program proposes a total of three signs to be placed along Stonehill Drive and Del Obispo Street. The proposed sign program will also complete an overall rebranding of the station from mobile to Circle K. The current rendering represents the proposed signage to be at the corner landscaped island at Stonehill and Del Obispo Street. The proposed sign is a freestanding identification sign pursuant section 9.37 of the Dana Point Zoning Code. The proposed plans to utilize the existing structural base and cabinet will be refaced um, for the sign with a hand carved wood and then painted the Circle K branding. The existing structural base will be painted a Sherwin-Williams natural ground color to match the additional painting to be completed on site. The proposed sign is to be externally illuminated by a small floodlight within an existing landscaping area. Sign is in, signage is encouraged to be externally illuminated from a direct light source per the Dana Point sign guidelines. The direct lighting helps to better integrate the signage um, with the building's architecture. 
The current rendering represents the proposed signs to be located along Stonehill and then along Del Obispo Street. The proposed signs are the fuel price information signs pursuant section 9.37 of the Dana Point Zoning Code. The proposed signage allows for changeable numeric digits for the fuel prices. The proposed signs are to be fabricated brand new and relocated to existing landscaped islands that are along both of the major streets. The new structural bases will be painted to match as the other signage with the Sherwin Williams natural ground or neutral ground, excuse me. The proposed sign is to also be externally illuminated by a small floodlight for the um, same justifications of the Dana Point guidelines to meet a direct light source. Fuel, fuel pump signage um, shows the existing and proposed uh, fuel pump uh, rebranding uh, pursuant section 9.371105 uh, or 150F4B uh, signs encompassed within a fuel pump are required or required by state law federal government shall not be regulated by this code so this signage is actually not um, taken account with the overall signage allowed for the site there are six pumps on site and no proposed changes to the location or the orientation of the existing pumps the U-shaped bollards, however, though, that surround each of the pumps um, will be painted the neutral ground color from Sherwin-Williams to match the other accents throughout the property. The proposed sign program, oops, excuse me, technical difficulties. The proposed sign program will remove the existing internally illuminated cabinet sign on site with no proposed additional signage thereafter. Currently, the service station building has blue banding around the facade at the upper part near the roof line. As a part of the proposed sign program, the property will change the banding color painted to match structural bases and U-shaped bollards with the Sherwin Williams neutral ground color. This is to also alleviate the um, continuation of mobile branding. Additionally, the fuel pump canopies have blue banding around the facade similar to the building. Uh, again, as a part of the proposed sign program, the property will change the banding color to match the Sharon Williams proposed neutral ground. Illumination of all signage on site uh, shows here on this slide that LED flood lamps to illuminate the proposed identification and fuel price information signage. Five lamps in total are proposed, two lamps for each fuel price sign and one for the identification sign. In conclusion, staff finds that the proposed sign program would uh, provide a visually attractive and consistent signage theme to the site. Additionally, all signage meets the area limitations of section 9.37 of the Dana Point Zoning Code, which allows for one square foot of sign area for each linear foot of building frontage along a public right-of-way. The signage would constitute an enhancement to the overall site. Staff accordingly supports the proposed sign program and recommends approval of SPP 17-001. Staff is present to respond to any questions of the commission. Thank you. Thank you. Does the commission have any questions of staff? Commissioner Nelson? Mr. Chairman, you have a few questions here. Um, and I think I know the answer, but I just want to make sure these, uh, the fuel number signs, those are, uh, plastic changeable. They're not digital, right? Or electronic. Yes. Okay. And then the second is just so I'm clear, cause there's stuff on these plants. Are we only looking at the fuel signs and the monument sign tonight? Yes. Plant? We're not looking at the building and all that other, the colors and no, right? unfortunately okay. there's no other proposed changes. I did want to include, however, the banding because that is the mobile signature blue that they will be removing as a part of that. Previously, this site has proposed other changes to actually continue on with the mobile. Um, that proposal, however, would have constituted a greater increase of overall signage to the site, which they would not have been able to do. Um, 
given the amount of pumps and the small actual uh, frontage of the actual site. So they actually have now conversely changed to go with the other, I guess, sister company, which would be Circle K. Okay. So it is, I guess then I back to, now I'm confused. So is the, the fuel canopies that are noted on here, those are part of the signage? Is, is that a branded? So it will no longer be a part of the signage as it's going to be considered just a neutral color for okay, the overall site. If they had left it blue, uh, that would have been a part of the signage because that's a part of the signature color for the branding purposes of mobile. Okay, perfect, thank you. Any other questions before we get to mine? Oh, go ahead, Vice Chair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, now I'm confused too. <laughs> I was looking at everything in total. And so which of the items specifically are we looking at? Are we looking at the, the mobile sign on the grass and the two signs on either side of that? Yes, so that's the existing way that the layout is currently today right. if you were to drive by the site. So the mobile sign that is existing on the corner will remain in the same exact location. They are going to refabricate a wood carb sign to be implemented into that existing signage, and then it will be externally illuminated. One of the uh, current fuel price signs is actually non-conforming in regards to the overall size of it. So both of them will be refabricated brand new. Those will also be relocated to two already existing turf landscaped areas, one that fronts Del Obispo and one that fronts Stonehill. So which are the items that are being repainted? These is so it's the bases of actually the, uh, where the signage is going to be mounted to will be painted the neutral ground. And then there is blue banding that exists around the canopies and around the building itself which that, if they were to have remained a mobile gas station, would have been factored into their overall signage because it's a part of their actual branding logo. So does this mean that the, the building itself is not going to be repainted or is this something for the future? Not the building itself, but the banding that Just is a part banding. of the signage will go to a neutral color since the city of Dana Point does not have design review, we wouldn't control a neutral uh, gray or brown like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? Um, did, did, was there any discussion of having the fuel price signs digital or? There's been quite a bit of back and forth with this applicant um, in regards to possible, you know, improvements to the site or signage. Um, I believe it just really comes down to how much it would end up cost to go digital with these signs. Um, there's other signage that are being proposed by the same fabricator. So I know that they have it in their wheelhouse. I do just believe it comes down to the landowner for this particular site that just isn't willing to make that push for that investment. Okay, thanks. Um, what's, are the garages, you showed us a picture with the two garage doors. Is there any automotive repair work going on at this location or what's the use of that space now? There has not been in several years, no. So other than what's beyond that, I do not know. Um, there is obviously the small convenience store, but there is no type of service or repair work that goes on on site at all. Okay, thank you. Um, was there any discussion out of curiosity? It's funny that, that there's a, the Pegasus sign on the wall that's a circle, and it seems like a great opportunity to put a K in the middle of it, but I'm just curious if that was ever, ever came up. It did not upon their resubmission when they actually totally changed uh, paths from going from mobile, because they were planning on rebranding with just their new improved logos and colors with mobile. And then um, in the 11th hour, they proposed a change to Circle K. Uh, they did not propose any new wall signage. The Pegasus uh, cabinet sign that's internally illuminated because it's also changeable copy um, is prohibited per the Dana Point uh, zoning code. So I do believe that they were just kind of staying clear of possibly creating something else that might have been denied before coming to the commission. I see, okay. Um, so there's a Circle K right across the street. Is that one going away or are there gonna be two Circle Ks right across from each other? 
Because i got to tell you, my kids are going to be really torn which one to go to. <laughs> uh, the applicant only informed us is that one is pretty much the service slash gas station from what they've um, referred to it as. And then the other, which you're already referring to that exists, is more of a convenience store. It has larger variety and selection for any of its uh, people that are shopping there. Uh, so as far as we know, it is staying there. I do know that there's been extreme interest along that entire block for developers and potential builders, but nothing that's ever come before the city. Okay, thank you. And then lastly, do we know about the timing of this kind of rebranding? Uh, well, given approval, if that is passed tonight, then they would be able to come in as soon as tomorrow and apply for a building permit in order to be able to pull. Generally, signed fabricators do wait just because of the actual extensive cost that it does entail with fabricating the signs. So they most likely will be in early as soon as possible. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, this is not a public hearing, so we don't, we just. It's not a public hearing, but we do have to ask if there's any uh, public comments that are out there. Okay. Scanning the room. Are there any public comments would like to speak, be heard on this issue? Seeing none. Um, does the commission have any comments or thoughts on this item? Yeah, um, this, as most of us know, because we, we all you know, drive around here, this is a real, business, a real busy intersection and it's an important one, obviously, to, to Dana Point because uh, you know, all roads lead through Della Vista through that intersection, and it's particularly during the summertime. I, I mean, it's like that's the, you almost look at that, that intersection as being the gateway in, into Dana Point. Uh, and um, of course, when summer comes along, we're going to have a lot of, hope of, well, I guess we will have a lot of visitors, and the trolleys will be going through, and then we know one trolley stops right there. Uh, just past that intersection. Um, so any anything that could be done with that intersection would would be great uh, for the city. So I, I still get the feeling this is kind of a hodgepodge. Is it going to be left in a hodgepodge condition where we still have some things still the same as it shows up in the picture and other things have moved or, or what? So the applicant, I mean, quite frankly, did as best as they could with what they were given as the provisions from the landowner. Uh, the, I do believe that the signage will significantly help address some of the issues that you've kind of named tonight, uh, especially with breaking up the kind of that entrance of the corner, which really is quite unsightly. I totally agree with you. Um, but especially by them having to relocate those two fuel price signs, which is kind of silly to have two right next to each other. It will help break up the massing for the overall site, I believe, and also help provide some uh, visibility for the cars that are motoring around in that actual uh, small commercial center, because actually the circulation on site is not very good. Um, but the overall rebranding it's, we're pretty much gonna get as good as we've gotten right now, especially with them changing the banding, which will help clean up the facade of the building. Other than that, they have not talked about wanting to complete any other improvements to the overall site. Okay, so small steps. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, <coughs> I, I'm supportive of this project. Uh, yeah, there's, I agree with you, Vice Chair Murphy, um, you know, it doesn't look great, but, but, but we're not here to be judges of if it looks great or not, it's, it's, we're here to approve the signage, and is the signage in compliance with the zoning code, or the sign code, and all that stuff, so, in that respect, um, I, uh, I agree that it does, it's, it's compliant, uh, it looks like, um, that's getting improved. So I think it, I've never heard of Circle K gas before, but um, I guess I'll probably learn to love it. <laughs> so um, with that, I'm supportive of the of the um, 
sign permit application. I'd make a motion that we approve sign program permit SPP 1701 for the single tenant service station located at 33571 Del Obispo Street. Do we have a second? I'd second that motion. Thank you. And that item passes. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Um, staff reports. Do we have any staff reports? I just briefly wanted to discuss some calendar management. Our second meeting in May is scheduled on Memorial Day, and um, the City Hall is obviously closed that day. Um, we do have a number of development and long range planning projects in the queue. Um, so from a staff perspective, to the extent we could still hold two meetings in May, it would be helpful. So our thought, um, if the commission is agreeable, is we'll send out a doodle poll um, sometime later this week to uh, find out availability of the commission either later the last week of May or if we need to carry over into the first week of June. Okay, that sounds good I'm to me. I'm seeing nods. That, that sounds, that sounds good okay. to me. Okay, thank you. That was easy. Commissioner comments? Commissioner Opal? I just want to say thank you. It's been a year on the commission and I've enjoyed my time and it's always a great experience coming here every day or every two weeks. <laughs> um, I, I appreciate all of staff's effort and work and uh, uh, they always do a very professional job which we appreciate and a thorough, they're thoroughly prepared. And so I appreciate that and um, you know, I'm anxious for summer to get here and get some trolley time in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I echo those same comments. Um, it, we're getting close to the summer. We're getting close to the fun, fun time. So uh, I look forward to that and I thank the staff for everything that they do every day, even though they don't know it, that's what I'm doing. So thank you. One year and you're still coming back. All right, <laughs> congratulations. Thanks. It's great to have you on, on this team or part of this commission, whatever. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got, so thank you. Okay, so with that, we'll adjourn tonight's meeting until the, um, do we have, uh, I assume, an agenda. We have items for the first meeting in May. Okay, so I adjourn the Planning Commission till then. <laughs>